George, George of the jungle, strong as he can be. So what do you do when your uncle Bob used to be in the mortgage business and is giving you advice on your mortgage loan? That's what we're going to be discussing in the creditjungle.com today. This is George Anderson. Thanks for dropping in. And I just wanted to have a little bit of fun with the video. And I know that real estate agents who are in the business or appraisers or people in the title business or the mortgage business, one of the, one of the most joyful moments that we ever have is when they say, oh, well, you know, my uncle used to be in this business and he is going to, and you're like, oh boy. <laughs> so let me just tell you some of the favorite things that I see happen uh, in the mortgage business, but also one of the really bad things. And let's start out with a bad one. Last year in March, I had a couple of young couples that had properties under contract and at the, the advice of a very close family member, they were advised, don't buy that home right now. COVID is going to collapse the economy and those pri that home, you're going to be able to buy it for 20% less by summertime. And I had people that had great homes under contract, they were qualified, the interest rates were good. Everything was fantastic for them. And at the advice of a family member, they withdrew their, contact, their, their contracts and decided not to buy a home. That decision from somebody who was a quote unquote professional or former professional at that point, literally cost them tens of thousands of dollars. And so be very careful taking advice from unqualified people. So the common things that I hear people giving advice on is, well, your rate should be get, you should be able to get this rate and you should be able to get that with no closing costs. Well, 2% no closing costs has never existed. Okay, 2% with lots and lots of closing costs, yes, that's there and those are the rates that you see on the internet to bait you in to get to talk to somebody about it. But the decision on whether you should lock or float your loan, okay, I don't know that. I normally tell the clients, we've had, I've got videos about lock or float, but I leave that up to the client. I can step in and give them from my experience or what I'm seeing in the market right now, this is what I think is happening. But if I was really good at guessing, you think I would be doing this for a living? No, I would be playing the bond market and I would have retired 25 years ago. Um, documents needed for closing. You know, well, back when I was in the business, we didn't need to show that. And you tell the lender that that's none of their business. You don't need to provide that information. Well, things have changed. And one of the things that's changed most, more than almost anything else, is source of funds for closing. You know, where is that money coming from for closing? And if it's not your money and if it hasn't been sitting in your bank account for at least 60 days, we need to know where it's been coming from. And if it's gift money, you know, family member, blood or marriage relationship, we've had discussions about this. But again, don't let somebody's advice who used to be in the business 15 years ago taint your expectations on what needs to happen in today's market. So uh, one of the other things that we see is just that, you know, well, you know, we used to close loans in 10 days. Why does that, why, why can't you get this? Why, why can't the underwriter just look at this right now? Well, it depends on what the workflow is and a lot of other things, but with Dodd-Frank and all the other regulations that kicked in with the combined TILA-RESPA uh, timeframes and disclosures and the closing disclosure timeframes and everything else, you're not going to close a loan in 10 calendar days. It's just, it's not going to happen. You might under ideal circumstances pull it off in 14 days, but you're not going to do it in 10. And then the final question ought to be, because of course, Uncle Bob, who used to be in the mortgage business or used to be a real estate agent, he's going to let you know, well, I was quite successful. I, I mean, I really did well when I was in the mortgage business. So this isn't the obvious question. Why aren't you in it anymore? So anyway, hopefully that helps you. And I know some real estate agents are going to get their kicks out of this too. And what's their list of the most common things that they hear from relatives who used to be in the business and used to be experts. But anyway, remember, you can always push button, get mortgage professional. My name is George Anderson. This is thecreditjungle.com. And I would love to help you with any questions or information that you have because your situation is unique and I'd love to help you with it. Have a great day.